Hello everybody, I'm the CCG Collector here to present my box break of Star Wars Destiny Empire at War. Now this box and two others like it I purchased from thegamehaven.com. They were offering them for $95 a box and free shipping and I mean, you can't pass that up and I didn't. Now the interesting thing about this box, and I'll zoom out a little so that you can see it here, is that it is a little bit taller than the Spirit of Rebellion booster boxes. You can see there's about, oh, I don't know, two inches more room. I would guess the purpose of this was to prevent, uh, you know, compression of packs and damage and all that. They have provided better gravity feeds so that the packs come out better. But from what I've heard, a lot of people have been complaining about bent cards. I uh, I'm hoping that's just that the people who get fine cards don't say anything about it because that's the norm and the people who don't are just more vocal but but we'll see. Uh, the other concern I heard about this set, oh that's interesting so they're all packed in stacks, okay. Uh, so the other concern I heard about this set was that the randomization was not as good as some people might have expected. Um, some There have been some reports of booster boxes containing the exact same distribution of rares and legendaries. Uh, so I don't know about that, but we'll see what I get. Okay, so the die is in the back, as I could feel. And the cards face, oh gosh, I don't know which direction. <laughs> but we'll, we'll take a look at them. Okay, we will, uh, <laughs> the first one is the common. They change it up every set. So we've got rear guard. Count the number of red dice you have showing a shield. Remove up to that many dice. Deploy squadron. Activate any number of your supports in the order of your choice. Trust the force. Reroll any number of blue dice. Pilfered goods. You may play an upgrade from your hand for free on each of your yellow characters. I have not actually seen that card before. That is outstanding. Now, I have seen most of these. I guess this one slipped under my radar. And Chance Cube, universally considered to be fairly worthless, but who knows? It might be meta-changing. Now, the, the real Chase legendaries this time around are... Okay, so I'm, I'm already not liking this. I don't know if it's just that the notch is directly above the opening and it wasn't with past packs or what, but that's two packs I haven't been able to open from the top. So this is the back of the pack, and I can see the cards are facing me. That's okay. The commons are on front. Uh, so, tech team, before you play a support, you may exhaust this support to decrease its cost by one. And I will, I will say more once I get to the end of this. Thermal Paint, after you activate attached character, force an opponent to choose and deal one damage to one of their characters. Then you may discard this upgrade to deal one damage to that character. Funeral Pyre, before one of your blue characters is defeated, you may move an upgrade from it to another one of your characters. Impersonate, move damage among your characters as you wish. And ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho ho, that's cool. Darth Vader's TIE Advanced. This is one of the... Um, Cards that was spoiled earlier on, I think, and I've honestly forgotten about it. But that's because when I when I do my deck building, I do a lot of hero decks, not so many villains. So let's let's see. Spend two resources to deal damage to a character equal to the damage on it. Oh boy, oh boy, that's pretty cool. So what I was saying is that the the legendaries that people are looking after, looking for right now. Okay, let's see if we can open the pack here. Nope. So that's poor placement of that notch. Uh, but the legendaries are Thrawn, who you can see on the back of this pack here, and Ancient Lightsaber. Now, Ancient Lightsaber, a lightsaber for two, with a, an anti-mill effect, I expect will be pretty useful in the meta. Thrawn, I'm not so sure. Something tells me that people think it's going to be better, he's going to be better than he actually will end up being. Uh, but we will see. Oh, that's interesting. Imperial Cap. Oh, did it. Closing that. <laughs> see, that's the problem with, well, whatever. That's the problem with how I'm pulling them. You'll see the rare right away. But when you control this battlefield after you activate a support, you may reroll its die. And Servant of the Dark Side. Before one of your other blue characters is defeated, you may move an upgrade from it to this character. 
cool. I feel I'm going to be running out of room here very soon, but uh, but that's all right. Castle yeah, so Thrawn, I don't know. I like him. He pairs perfectly. I'm guessing it's not going to work. Oh, see, I avoided it this time. He pairs <laughs> perfectly with Unkar, Unkar Plut. So, and given that he doesn't have any damaged sides, of course, that's the sort of strategy you're going to go after. Uh, resource, control -y, melee kind of thing. But how well he'll actually serve that purpose, we'll see. And I am going through these slowly right now, these commons and uncommons, but as we get toward the end of the box more, oh, coercion. Spot a yellow character to reveal an opponent's hand and choose an event from it. They must play that event as their next action if able. And fittingly, LL30, Blaster Pistol. Ambush Redeploy, turn another one of your dice to a side showing range damage. Can't go wrong with Ambush Redeploy for two, that's awesome. Uh, but as we get through more of these packs, I will definitely be speeding up the opening and just flipping through the commons. So I'll put my rares back here. The uncommons can go in another pile. There's another rare. And then we'll get the commons all in a big stack. I tell ya, I am not looking forward to sorting all these, but I'll do it. I'll do it. Because CCG Collector is meticulous about how his cards are. Alright, we're just gonna do this upside down. It's gonna be easier. Alright, and then. Whoop. The day is ours, a very cool card. Claim the battlefield, even if an opponent has claimed it this round. It's neutral and red, so good for um, cards like, oh, what's his uh, name? The, the guy from, the guy from Rogue One. Uh, cruel, but intelligent or something, whatever his name is. Endurance, oh. <laughs> well, we'll get to endurance in just a bit. Here we have our first legendary. And he looks like the guy in that card and that card. And now we know his name is Cad Bane. Action. Play an upgrade from your hand on this character, paying its cost. Then you may activate him. 12 hit points for 1317. And we've got Endurance. Play only if one or more of your dice were removed during an opponent's last turn this round. Roll one of those removed dice into your pool. Anyway, it's the number one card in the... Spirit of Rebellion expansion. He's legendary. If you control the battlefield when you activate him, you may roll in a Death Trooper die, even if you don't have Death Trooper. Which is pretty cool, but of course you need to control the battlefield. So the day is ours might let you do that. Okay. Dangerous mission. Turn a die to a side showing your resource cost. So this is nice because it's works for you, but it also works for your opponent, too. I mean, if you see they don't have any resources, maybe they got a die showing something you don't want, turn it to a side they can't pay for. Before one of your supports would be discarded, you may instead discard this, so it's ammo belt for supports. Rend, I expect this will be a popular one, but shouldn't be too expensive because it is a common. Discard a support or upgrade that costs zero from play. That's your fast hand, that's your force speed, it's all sorts of nasty stuff. And then all quiet on the front with that guy with his thousand yard stare. Remove any number of shields from your characters, then discard cards from the top of an opponent's deck equal to the number of shields you removed. And T-47 Airspeeder. Neutral gray vehicle for two. Very cool. Very cool. Echo, oh, you guys all saw that because the die was sitting right here. Maybe it was just out of frame. All right, next one. No one saw that, thankfully. A no surrender. Reroll one of your blue character dice showing a blank, then you may resolve it. Prepare for war. Play only if this is the first action of this round. No player has taken an action, gain one resource. So that's another one that you need to have control of the battlefield for, otherwise you don't get the first action. Now that's a very well drawn, uh, well painted image. Of course they don't attribute it to anyone, but that's that's cool, I like that. Secret mission, choose a color, then discard the top card of an opponent's deck. If it's the chosen color, gain one resource. But even if it's not, 
you've got a one mil for zero. Something familiar. Spot two blue characters to reveal a random card from an opponent's hand. Then you may turn a number of dice equal to or less than that card's cost to sides of your choice. And Z95 Headhunter, another neutral gray vehicle for two. No specials, just a lot of guns for a lot of resources. Developed by Incom and Subpro, it was a versatile snub fighter that continued to see use long after it was support, surpassed by the X-Wing. Cool. And if you guys have made it through every second of this so far, I'll just assure you all that I will be reviewing the rares and legendaries at the end of the video. So if you don't want to see the individual cards, if you don't want to see, hear all my banter, then feel free to skip ahead and just see what I got. Bestow. For one, move a non-ability upgrade from one of your blue characters to another character. Deploy a squadron. Activate any number of your supports in the order of your choice. So, problem with supports? They're slow. This, for zero, makes them not so slow. Covering fire. Count the number of dice you have showing range damage. Reroll that many of opponent's dice. Something familiar. And the Wookiee Warrior. Uh, ten hit points for nine. It's kind of like the hired gun with melee. Costs a little extra. But, um, you know, could be what you're looking for. Dang it, I am awful at hiding these. Tech Team, before you play a support, exhaust this to decrease its cost by one. Pickpocket, discard a random card from each opponent's hand, draw cards equal to the number of cards that were discarded. Bad feeling. Remove one of your dice to reroll any number of dice. Okay, that's not bad. That's cool. Threaten. Spot a yellow character to remove an opponent's character die unless they deal damage to that character, the yellow one you spotted, equal to the value showing on that die. And Bosk, Wookiee Slayer. So your opponent's running one of these guys, throw a Bosk at him. After you activate this character, you may move one damage to from an opponent's character to another character. Okay. I feel like that was an effect that was on one of the events. Uh, like, uh... Hot Pursuit or something like that. Relentless Pursuit, maybe. Well, makes sense, of course. Very thematic. We got Crossfire here. Remove a die showing your resource cost, or spend one resource to remove two dice showing your resource cost. Okay. Appraise. Remove one of your dice showing your resource to play a support from hand, increasing its cost by two. That's, I assume, Lando. With his golden... Elephant Tippo. Strike Briefing. <laughs> Look at the top three cards of an opponent's deck and rearrange them in any order. Then you may discard the top card of that deck. For zero, okay. Zero, kind of a mill. Trickery, discard your hand. For each card you just discarded, you may remove a die showing a value that is equal to that card's cost. And Scatter Blaster. One of the latest cards to be spoiled. Upgrade Weapon. Deal one damage to each to up to four different characters. Action, remove one of attached characters, character dice to turn this to any side. That's kind of cool. That goes right there. And it's die follows suit. So we've got a lot of neutrals here. Which is interesting, because I don't think this set had more neutrals than the other ones. Maybe I'm mistaken. But we'll keep going. <laughs> and you see I haven't pulled a single red rare or legendary yet. Will that change with this pack? At least everyone's been different so far. I mean, that's nice. Persuade, choose an opponent who has less resources than you, then turn one of the dice to any side. Imperial HQ, before you resolve a dice showing resource cost, you may exhaust this to decrease that resource cost by one. Pin down, spot a vehicle to remove a die. For one, you got die removal. Very nice. Flanking maneuver, count the number of support dice in your pool, deal that much damage to a character. And BD Cutter Vibro Axe, wielded by a weak way, it appears. Before this dial deals damage to a character, you may remove all shields from that character. Sweet. Still no red rares or legendaries. Hey buddy, you're a red rare or legendary. Where are you? Speaking of legendaries, we've gone through 5, 10, 11 packs and only gotten one. That means this should be a legendary, right? Uh, heat of Battle. Okay. I don't... No, sorry, I'm looking at it under the camera. I don't know what scene this is from, but I like the artwork. Choose an opponent. That opponent turns any number of their dice to side showing damage. Turn any number of your dice to side showing damage. Okay. Risky, but could be good. 
Voices cry out, reroll all dice showing a value of two or more. Main Plaza, move one damage from a character to this battlefield and move all damage from this battlefield to a character. Ooh, boy. Risky. Reaping, oh, we don't know what that one is. Reaping the Crystal, play a blue card that costs three or more from your hand, decreasing its cost by one. And Ghost, resolve another side of this die. Okay, cool, cool. Not complaining in our first red uh, card here, so... Hey, it was a red legendary. All right. And, um, you know, it was card number 12. So exactly pack number 12. Exactly what it should have been. Indomitable. Play only if you have exactly one character. Palpatine. Give a blue character three shields. Palpatine. Very easy to understand what that's intended for. Battle Rage. Spot a character that has six more damage. Resolve one of the characters. Dice showing damage. Increasing its value by two. Trust the Force. <laughs> Reroll any number of blue dice. Fort Anaxes. While you control this battlefield, each of your characters have the Guardian keyword. Now that is nice. And Grand Inquisitor. Sith Loyalist. 12 hit points for 14, 19. Remove a character die showing a blank, then deal 2 damage to that character. Oof. There you are, Mr. Grand Inquisitor. Uh, space on my other table over there for <laughs> all these wrappers. Oh, no one saw that. Alright, what do we got? We got Swift Strike. Remove a die showing a modifier. Stolen Cash. Okay. Just gain a resource. Thermal Paint we saw. Impersonate we saw. And Mortar Gun. Spend two resources and remove this die. Showing range damage to deal that damage to each of an opponent's characters. Oh boy. Dangerous mission. Yep. Imperial HQ. Fortuitous strike. Spot a red character to re-roll any number of your dice, then deal damage to a character equal to the number of dice you just re-rolled that are now showing range damage, okay? Entrenched, give five shields to your characters, and K2SO. Okay, um, so he's clearly very similar to Jin or so, a legendary for 1520, and a lot of good dice sides. People are on the fence, I think, about if he's going to be good or not. Cost to play on this character, a uh, play a weapon on this character is increased by two. After you play or move a weapon onto this character for, for the first time each game, ready him. So remember that card bestow where it's like, hey, move a blue upgrade to a character. There you go. You can do that. You don't have the increased cost and you ready him. Plus, yeah, so that, that could be, that could be pretty good, especially with sides like that. So that's four of my legendaries and neither of the two that people like to uh, to talk about. Local patrol, patrol, here's one I was interested in. Force an opponent to choose to either lose one resource or discard the top two cards of their deck. Kind of like Create Dragon Howl, uh, which I think that's targeted die. Opponent either removes it or discards the top two. Kill them all, deal one damage to each non-unique character your opponents have. Come in here. <laughs> I love that artwork. Ah, uh, get off this speeder, Ortolan. You blue elephant guy. Go play a piano in Jabba's Palace. Anyway, resolve an opponent's vehicle dies if it were your own. If it dies a resource cost, you do not have to pay it. And ID9 Seeker Droid. Okay, so I've thought about having a deck with the uh, Seven Sister Seeker, whatever it's called, where you just activate it over and over and over and over and over again, because each time you do, you roll another one of these guys into the pool. But for that to happen, you need these guys. So that's pretty awesome. The X in this die is equal to the number of secret dice, droid, secret droid dice in your pool. When resolving, resolve them one at a time. All right, get another clump of boosters out here. You know what's nice? All the packs have been legitimate so far. Uh, no bent cards. Another issue I saw was that some people had. Some people had. Uh, four cards in one pack and six in another. I haven't come across that yet, so that's nice. Persuade, okay. 
Mandalorian armor. After you play this upgrade, give attached character one shield, and they can have one additional shield at peace. Garel spaceport. Move one of your dice to gain resources equal to half the value on that die rounded up. Okay, sure. And temptation. Choose an opponent. That opponent may draw two cards. If they do, you gain two resources. If they do not, you draw two cards. I like the perspective on this card because it's a scene we're all familiar with, but it kind of kind of shows it from a different well perspective. I don't know. I, I just like that that take on that scene, so that's cool. Uh, how much do we have now? Oh, we still got another roll left in the box too after this. Booster breaks, man. I tell you, this is going to be a long video. So hopefully you're all enjoying. Hopefully you're all strapped up tight. Against the odds, re-roll one of your dice. Then if it just re-rolled the same symbol, you may resolve it, increasing its value by two. So it doesn't have to be the same side, just the same symbol. Force Vision, Ambush, look at the top five cards of a player's deck. Lightsaber Pull. Ah, yes. The first tutor card. Uh, based on Magic the Gathering's Demonic Tutors and uh, Vampiric Tutor and all that. And the first card that causes you to reshuffle your deck, which Fantasy Flight said they weren't going to do, but they did it. Zero. Grab a lightsaber. Pilfered Goods. And Houndstooth. Uh, I'm not liking these legendaries, but you know what? That's okay. After you activate the support, you may remove one of your yellow character dice to gain one resource. Okay. And all these packs left, I've got one more legendary. So we'll see how that goes. Defiance, okay. So that is one of the images on the box. Reroll one of your character dice and heal damage from that character equal to the value of showing on the die. Now, people who, who watch me do longer videos like this, I'll get to that in a second. Resolve one of your dice showing a modifier side as though we're not a modifier. And detention center. Exhaust the support to remove a character die. Okay, well, then any player may remove one of their character dice to discard it from play. And training remote. Okay, so this is lure of power for light side. Remove the modifier sides of this dice to, revolve, to modify any symbol on one of your blue character dice. So that's a lot more limited, though. Okay. So people who watch my, who are familiar with my longer videos, know that I usually like to have a subject or something to talk about during the video, and I, I have topics uh, planned. It's just that as long as we have new cards, I'd rather go through them. Heat of battle again. Love the artwork. I'd rather go through them than you know, just babble on about other stuff. Because, I mean, that's why you're all watching this booster opening video, right? This booster box break. You guys want to see all the cards from Empire at War. Maybe you're not as spoiled as I was in terms of what all the cards were. So, hey, Natural Pilot. Ooh, that's expensive. That, that is a big tie interceptor. That is a really big tie interceptor. Man, oh man, I didn't think A-Wings were that small. Maybe Matt Bradbury doesn't know about, you know... Proportions. Anyway, after you activate the attached character, you may ready a vehicle. But you know what? Here's what I'm saying: that that you guys are watching this, you want to see the cards. I'm guessing. So we'll go through the cards, and then once I start getting repeats, then we'll we'll chat. We'll chat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the uncommon and the rare are on the floor. <laughs> Exhaust to support. Well, that's not bad. Thermal paint, we know about. Lightsaber pull, can't have too many of those. Keen instincts. Someone commented that it's rather unfortunate that this card that shows turret cannot be played on turret because you cannot use blue abilities. But there it is. And Bazy Natal, the person on that anarchy card right there. Heal one damage to a character, or three if that character has no damage on it. Well, the nice thing is, I mean, that's a nice special, decent special, but the nice thing is 710. Good fitter in there. Uh, what do we got here? No survivors? Yeah, see, I mean, we've gone through probably 20 packs now. How many? Yeah, exactly 20 packs, and we're still finding new cards, so that's great. Deal one damage to each of an opponent's damaged characters. 
Forest Vision we saw, Bowman Monastery we saw. Fall back. Each player may choose one upgrade starting with you. Discard all upgrades from play that were not chosen. And Hera Syndulla. Uh, this one is, I think, going to be popular. Low cost, good ability. Play a vehicle from your hand for free after that action, fan and after that action phase ends. If that vehicle is still in play, return it to your hand. So the interesting thing is, you can do that. You can whip out a vehicle, then you can play something like, what is it, salvage, reclaim, something or other, and, you know, discard it to gain the resources equal to its cost. But, I mean, she probably will match up well with Poe. She definitely will match up great with all the vehicles uh, in, in, this, in this set. Just throw vehicles at them. Roll on. Okay, so this is a card I wanted. For reasons which I will not disclose right now, but for zero, re-roll one of your dice. You may re-roll that again, then you may re-roll that again. The common, I should be seeing more of them. Mandalorian armor, covering fire, fallback again, and Sienna Re, the dark side version of Harris and Dula. Spend two resources to ready a vehicle. Veteran over the battles of the battles over Endor and Jakku. Jack who, too? Wasn't that, like, significantly afterward? Well, I mean... Yeah, it was significantly afterward, because... Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. So the battle over Jack who would have had to have been significantly before The Force Awakens, because... Defiance? Because... Oh, that's a cool one. Ruthless Tactics. Because the Star Destroyer's already crashed. It wasn't like it was happening during the movie. Resolve one of your dice, increasing its value by the resource cost showing on it. So that is good for, there is like an E-Web or some big gun that that would be very useful on. That each increase in damage is like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. And then each one costs, you know, 3 resources, 2 resources, 1 resource. Anyway, play it only if an opponent has more characters than you. Exhaust one of them. And Fearless. After you activate attached character, you may give it one shield and draw a card. And Jedi Instructor. After you activate this character, you may turn one of your character dice to a side, showing the same symbol as this die. Uh, so the, the blue Jedi non-unique characters, uh, blue Jedi actually done it, the blue non-unique characters have always had that kind of, uh, what's, what's a good way of describing it? There's Bestow again. Ooh, Truce. This is another one I wanted. Ambush. You may gain one additional. You may take one additional action after you play this card. Of course, each player gains one resource. Uh, good to get off to an early start. I'm thinking about pairing it with Lando. He gives you a resource to start. You get one of these guys. You get another one. That's four on the first turn. You can do a lot of damage with that. Um, but the blue resources, the the, the blue um, characters, non unique characters, are kind of. I'll just let you read that while I talk. They're neat, but I don't know how effective they'll be in a game. In a game so much focused on aggression, like well, like Pomas or Nines, where the idea is just to damage, 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 damage like crazy, beat someone on the second or third turn, second or third round, whatever you want to call it. Insidious. I don't know how good those are ever going to be, but they're neat. Exhaust the support to resource. Secret Mission, that's a common. Secret Mission, we saw that one. Port District, cool one. While you control this, each card that you play that costs three or more has the ambush keyword. Probably limited use. Well, okay, so here's the thing. If you have a lot of high-cost cards, assuming you can all play them, you have the resources to play them, now you're getting a lot of ambush, which means you're getting a lot of action, which means you're probably going to maintain control of that. But if you're not... Grand Inquisitor's Lightsaber. So that is our final legendary, I believe. Which is okay. I mean, I got Grand Inquisitor, so why not get his lightsaber? Blue character only. Turn a character die to a side showing blank, and then re-roll the die. As it's special for four. Dang. And keep on going. We got more, guys. We got more. Uh, how many more? Perfect. So, all right, what's in this one? 
cornered prey. Hey, it's that guy. Count the number of dice an opponent has showing blank. Deal that much damage to a cre to a character, rather. Rend. Main plaza. Yep. Hate. After you activate attached character, you may deal it one damage to deal one damage to another character. I could see that being very good. And A280. Blaster rifle. Redeploy. Whoops. Hate goes on this pile. Port district as well. <laughs> redeploy. After this character is defeated, move this card. So redeploy is always nice, especially on two-cost cards. Not bad. So I mentioned nines and pomas earlier. And the thing about that is that Fantasy Flight Games supposedly promised a... Ooh, partnership. That's a new one. A uh, new one for this opening, of course. Supposedly promised errata for those, for both of those. And I don't know how I feel about that. Of course, regular viewers of the channel will know my go-to game for reference is the Star Wars CCG from the 90s and the very, very early 2000s. And they never... Um, they never banned any cards. They never restricted any cards. Instead, feint and coordination. Instead, they would release specific cards that would counter those troublesome ones. So if you had a card from that set, it might say something like um, either take this effect, this effect, or that effect, or cancel this card, this specific card, or that specific card. So they were useful cards still, but they... Bounty postings, okay. So they were useful cards still, but they also were there to stop other strategies that were prevalent at the time. And that was important because, like Star Wars Destiny, the Star Wars CCG had no concept of a sideboard. You played one game, or... I think it was one game, yeah. And and that was that. So you had to be prepared with your deck for whatever your opponent could throw at you. Now, they did reprint a few cards, but they did those as kind of uh, special case cards. So the cards they reprinted were things like K3PO, which was never intended to... Of course, this guy has the ability of the card probe, which was... Uh, K3PO was, uh, R3PO, excuse me, was printed with the wrong image, and they released something to replace that, a free pack, a free sealed card. You just mail in the old one, they give you that one, I believe. They had um, cards like Asteroid Sanctuary, which was missing some very key wording on it, and same deal, you could get a corrected, reprinted card. Good, another ID9 secret droid. Hey, if that's a card I... Gonna get a, if there's a card I'm going to get a double of, I'm glad it's that one. But that's how I think such things should be handled. You know, it's it's kind of hard for me as, uh, you know, looking back 15 years now to get a, a really good feel for the, the time frame of that. I don't know how long cards had errata without uh, an updated version of it being printed. But the idea of taking a card and saying, hey, this has different wording now, and you all just have to know what the different wording is, that doesn't sit well with me. Like, hyperspace jump, got new wording. Fast hands, got new wording. But to look at the cards, you wouldn't know that. And, uh, I mean, that's the purpose of core sets and revised sets and that. You know, Star Wars, of course, and most card games, a lot of card games have revised sets where they release... That's an interesting one where they release the same card, the same set, but just in an unlimited format and with uh, issues and errors corrected. And this game, I mean, it's only been around for a year or so, so it may just not be old enough for that to happen. But, I don't know. Another thing, too, I, I don't mean to complain, so I'm sorry if it sounds like that, but... 
it does kind of baffle me that a game with only, what, 100 and something cards in a given set, that they do not have enough playtesters to see where things might be abusable. Like, they did not even consider, hey, maybe Poe, this pilot, should have an ability that only lets you use vehicles and not weapons. You know, just simple stuff like that. Or maybe fast hands should... Maybe it shouldn't be on any character. Maybe it should only be on a yellow character, which is what they ultimately changed it to. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. General Hux. Okay. I think that's going to be another limited use card. I mean, play a red event from your hand. Decreasing its cost for by one for each character you have. How many events are you going to have that are going to cost you know, two or three or more. Because that's where you're going to really see the impact of it. So that's that. Um, another thing, I mean, honestly, this is my... Oh, hey, that takes us to the end of the, the box. Well, <laughs> I will um, I will continue that thought maybe in a later video. Um, but let's, let's see what we got here. So we've got Legend... I'm not going to move those dice out. Our rares were General Hux, Psych... Psychometry, psychometry, whatever. Just dude grabbing a gun. Gamorian Guard. Kinlan Voss. Seeker Droid. Here we go. Yeah, so you can you can see all these. I mean I I already went through them. Not too much to say at this point. The Warrior, C95, T47. That's when Darth Vader's tie advanced. And then the legendaries. Six legendaries. We've got Grand Inquisitor's Lightsaber. Hound's Tooth. K2SO. Or K2SO. <laughs> Grand Inquisitor. Ghost. And Cad Bane. So that was that. This was an excessively long video, I know. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. Hopefully you like it. Um, either way, thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and get out there and enjoy Empire at War. I'm the CCG Collector, and I'll see you next time.